Jean is a really warm person. She's very endearing. She has an absolute positive approach to life. Is it's just one of those people that you meet and you think I, you could instantly connect with her. She's just a wonderful person. She's got such a great energy about her. Um, she's always been very positive. You know, I mean, obviously, music is a passion of hers, and you can just see that in just the person that she is. She sort of carries that joyfulness inside of her, you know. The first time I really realized that something was wrong was when I was out with my kids outside for about three hours or so and I got a bit chilled and um, when I brought the kids back in and I tried to undo their jackets my fingers wouldn't work properly, they wouldn't open and close properly. But I kind of thought maybe it was a pregnancy-induced carpal tunnel, so I thought, well, once I have the baby, it will get better. But it got worse when I had the baby, and then we started thinking I needed to see somebody. Um, and it was about maybe a month to two months later that I went to the neurologist. Right away, you think, you think maybe they're wrong, and, and that's always your hope. And you start to see symptoms progressing, it becomes, I guess, more real. So, so there's a little piece of me, I suppose, that was, uh, and that probably still is, in, in denial of the diagnosis, just not wanting to accept it. Malcolm, you know, when I need him to do something, especially for the baby, pick her up, move her somewhere else, she's getting into a dangerous area, um, he's, he's very helpful. Sometimes I have to pull out the mommy voice, but, but generally he, he likes to help and to have that extra responsibility. But I really just answering the questions as they come up, I suppose, you know, because the questions are going to change over time, you know, like uh, based on the situation of the, what's going on that day or, or how mom's feeling that day or how dad's managing uh, everything, you know. So they're smart. They feel the tension or the, they know. We have had conversations about, about what death is and, and how it works and how when we die, um, mommy is, mommy will go to heaven, we all go to heaven, and um, we don't always get to choose when we go. It's not easy to sit there and listen to a baby who's crying that needs your help that you physically cannot help. And you just have to ask someone else for help um, and wait until they're ready because the baby needs help but you can't do it. Um, that's, that's really hard as a mother. Um, it's hard not to pick up your own kid. I don't get much time touching her because I just can't. I can't hold her. And that's really hard as a mother.
and so I look at what's happened in my life and I don't like it and it's not fun but I have to use it for good I have to take it and see where can we go from here to help bring more light to the needs of the ALS community then it's my responsibility to be out there and to say something and I can't be silent. So we've been at a steady climb in terms of the research that we're doing and we need to get over that hump and, and I feel like the momentum that we've had the last couple of years has, has brought us further than we've ever been and, and we're, we're nearing that crest. So as soon as we can get over that and use the momentum that we've built over the last couple of years to get us to that next step, the research is going to continue, the, the breakthroughs are going to continue and we're going to be better off moving on our, on our way towards a treatment. It's not a struggle that's going to go on forever. There will be a discovery. There will be progress moving forward. And the biggest hurdle right now is money and time. And the more money that we've got in there, the less time it will take. And that means fewer people with ALS will die. If we have more money, more research is done, the discovery will come faster. And that's people's lives. That's my life.